I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. You've got your tank set up and it's almost ready for livestock. So close you can almost taste it. Taste the livestock, fish or friends, and food. I digress. So your tank's set up, but first you need to cycle it before you're putting the livestock in it. Now what's cycling and why is that important? That's what I'm covering in this episode of our Nano Slash Office Tank series. Cycling your tank involves building a colony of nitrifying bacteria to process the waste in your tank. Waste being fished waste, uneaten fish food, things like that. Now why is that important? Well, if you don't have that colony of nitrifying bacteria to process the waste, then certain compounds such as ammonia and nitrite can rise to levels that are toxic for your fish and invertebrates. Now, don't fall into the trap of thinking that you cycle your tank once and it's done forever. In reality, your tank is always cycling because there's always waste being produced in the tank. However, once you get that initial colony of nitrifying bacteria built, you shouldn't be able to detect a cycle. It's simply running in the background, doing its thing automatically. Here's how the nitrogen cycle works. Step one of the nitrogen cycle occurs when ammonia is converted into nitrites by nitrifying bacteria. Step two occurs when the nitrifying bacteria takes those nitrites and makes them into nitrates. Once there is little or no ammonia, little or no nitrites, and some amount of nitrates, the initial cycling of your tank is complete. You measure ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels with test kits, and since you're just getting started, the Salifert set of kits is a good choice. We've included links to all of them in the comments below. There's three ways to cycle your tank. First up, the old school method. Take some live rock out of an existing tank and put it in your tank. Now this comes with risks that I'm not willing to entertain. One of them is poor quality live rock. If that live rock has been in a tank that's been neglected, it can have high nitrates and phosphates locked in it, then you put it in your shiny new saltwater tank and it can release those nitrates and phosphates into your tank. Now, live rock can also have certain hitchhikers such as mantis shrimp and aptasia anemones that you don't want in your tank, as well as fish diseases. So, I don't go the live rock route. That worked great back in the day. We've evolved. I don't do that anymore. What I do do is the other two routes, which is fishless cycling with an ammonia source or cycling with fish. Fishless cycling looks like this. First, you add a nitrifying bacteria in a bottle product like Dr. Tim's one and only or Fritz Turbo Start 9. Then you add ammonia chloride, which feeds the nitrifying bacteria. Then over the course of about 10 days, you measure ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels, adding more ammonia as needed. Cycling your tank with fish. A word of caution before we get started on this method. First, I use this method on all my saltwater tanks, my tanks, my clients' tanks, and I've had great results every single time. I've never lost a fish during the process. I've never subjected a fish to high levels of ammonia or nitrite. Part of the key with this process is to go slow. We're gonna add one or two fish, add the nitrifying bacteria to bottle product, and then watch for the results. And I've got water on hand in case I need to do a water change. And I've also made sure that that bacteria in a bottle product is fresh. One great way to make sure the product is fresh is to check the expiration date. Expired nitrifying bacteria should be considered dead and not used. You want to make sure that that bacteria is viable and getting fresh bacteria is one of the best ways to do that. The cycling process is straightforward and there are common mistakes that are made during the process. To help you avoid these mistakes, I sat down with Dr. Tim Hovenek of Dr. Tim's Aquatics. Dr. Tim was a pioneer of nitrifying bacteria in a bottle products and he was the first to show that nitrospira bacteria, not nitrobacter, was the real nitrate oxidizing bacteria in aquariums. In other words, he's the real deal. Dr. Tim, what are some common mistakes that people make when they're cycling their tanks? Well, the main thing is people try to cycle without any way of telling where they're going, meaning they don't get test kits. If you're gonna cycle, you need to get an ammonia nitrite, nitrate test kit. And a lot of people you know, will, will use a, like my bacteria and they'll measure ammonia and, and nitrite and they'll get zero on both. And they'll go, your bacteria is not working. Well, how, okay, the, the bacteria are supposed to convert ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate. Did you measure nitrate? No. Well, how do you know it hasn't completed the steps? You gotta do the third step. Yeah, I've heard you say as well about people say, well, I measured ammonia and I'm getting 0.25, so I still have ammonia. 
but you said that's not actually accurate because they can't measure down that low. Very few. Really, realistically, the test kits available to the hobbyist are indicators. And don't beat yourself up. If it most kids test kits use the, what's called the salicylate method. It's going to go from yellow at low to green at high. If it turns green and it turns quick, you've got ammonia. If you've really got to shake it and wait and you're looking, is it yellow? Is it light green? Don't worry about it. You don't have ammonia. It's an indicator. Presence, absence. This measuring at 0.25 or 0.2 or 0.05, you're just wasting your time and effort trying to do that. So what about filling your tank or using water from someone else's tank that's already established? How about that for cycling your tank? Pretty much not going to happen because they're the bacteria. I, I mean, I've showed this, I've done plenty of DNA analysis of filtered water and there's very little to no nitrifiers in your friend's water. It, they're stuck to surfaces. That's where they want to be. What about adding a piece of fish food or dead shrimp, table shrimp, put that in the tank and let that go? People like that, but if you want a smelly tank that looks terrible, go for it. Because what's going to happen? The shrimp is an ammonia. So now you've got the, the heterotrophs, the bacteria that break down the shrimp. They're gonna, they've got to break it down. They're going to multiply. So the tank is going to get cloudy and they're breaking down that shrimp into ammonia. Okay. But the problem when you do that is that the bacteria breaking down the, the shrimp are taking the micronutrients like phosphate out of the water. So they can be starving the nitrifiers because nitrifiers need small amounts of phosphate. Everything, every organism needs phosphate and you get a phosphate stall. Whether you're going the fish list cycle or you're cycling your tank with fish, either way, take a deep breath, slow down, be patient. If you're going the fishless route, you wanna make sure your tank is actually ready for the livestock before you put any livestock in there. And if you're cycling your tank with fish, remember, start slow, one or two fish max, and then wait and see how the nitrogen cycle responds. It's very likely that all you're gonna see is a nitrate level the next day, which is fine, but that doesn't mean you need to go run out and add lots more fish to your tank. Give time for your tank to mature. It will thank you and make sure that it appreciates you by being happy and healthy down the road. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.